You know, sometimes people ask me, they say, you know, Father Anthony, why do you get so animated when you talk? Because I know sometimes I work myself up in a little bit of a frenzy here, okay? You should see me. Like, you don't understand. Sometimes I come home from church, I could wring the sweat out of my shirt underneath here. How's that for a beautiful picture? Who wants a hug after church now? Okay? <laughs> but I know, I get myself kind of worked up right here. Why, why you do that? And the truth of the matter is, just being very honest, the truth is, I don't know how to do anything otherwise. Because as I shared in the beginning, I've been on both sides. I've tasted both sides of the, of, of the equation. I've been on the without God and without church, do it on your own. And I've been on the I'm all in. And this is the core of my life. I've been on both sides. And there is no comparison. There is no comparison. I've been here. I've tasted this way. I've tried to make it work. It doesn't work. No matter how much you try, it's living in poop. Life on your own, life without God, life without the church is living on a daily basis in poop. And sometimes you can move the poop around to look in a nice way this way, and you can present this way, and you can brush the poop from this part of your hair and this part of the hair. But in the end, you're living, you're eating, you're sleeping in poop. And then I've been on the other side where I found someone who said, you don't need to live in that poop. And actually, I want to connect you to a body, a family that can help you navigate the various poop landmines in this world. And I said, this is great. This is the best thing ever. And this is free. And this is welcome all. This is, this is no, 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 no criteria, no requirements. All come one, come all. And you tell me how, like telling me don't get excited about it is like telling someone who survived cancer, don't make a big deal out of it. Okay, just got piped out. Keep it to yourself. You survived can just, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's great. Can't be done. I meet people all the time. And so do you, but you may not even, may not look at it this way. I meet people all the time and I see this very clearly. I see very clearly, disconnected from God, living in poop, solution to all their problems, connect with God, connect with his family. And I see it very clearly. And the worst is when I see someone who doesn't see it and they think everything else is the problem except this. For example, I see people in their marriage. I see marriages dying slowly. I see marriages withering away. I see marriages that I just see them crumbling. And I hear things like, oh, you know, it's because she, uh, he, she talks too much. Or, you know, he doesn't talk enough. He's not e emotion enough. And she's too much with this. Or the problem is the kids. Or the problem is the busy. Or the problem is this is my favorite. We're married too young. Married too young. Our parents all got married at like age 12 and 13. So now we're married too young. I hear this and I'm like, guys, this is nonsense. You know the solution? It's because you're disconnected from God. That's the answer. You're disconnected from God. And you can play all these games. And you can read all the books. But as long as you're disconnected from God, you got no hope. Disconnected from God means living in poop the rest of your life. I see people drowning, drowning, trying to keep up. I don't want to say keep up with the Joneses because it's not keep up with the Joneses. It's keep up whatever this, this, this in my mind, this, this achievement. And it's going to be the next achievement. It's going to be the next promotion. It's going to be as soon as I turn this corner, as soon as I reach this state, drowning, losing their relationships, losing their mind. But it's just like, okay, it's just a busy seed and I'm going to get there. And I want to say it's not. It's not, there's no achievement that's going to get you there. I promise you, it's not. Because if it was, you'd have already got it because you've already been more successful than you ever imagined that you would be. It's not. It's connected with God and connected with the eternal family. I see good people all the time. Good people living without purpose. Good people, kind people, nice people. But just kind of living what I want to say is like an empty life. I'm like, your life could be so much more. Your life could be so much more. If you were connected to God and connected to his eternal family. Don't tell me to be calm. Don't tell me to be quiet. It's not possible. Because principle of life, we speak boldly about what we believe deeply. And maybe the problem for some of us isn't our speaking, it's our believing. We speak boldly about what we believe deeply. You can't disconnect evangelism from faith. The one who truly believes the gift is great can't keep his mouth shut. It's like, it's like I won the lottery, but I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm just going to keep it to my... If somebody believed that they won the lottery, are you kidding me? You would share that with the whole wide world. It's like going, saying, uh, you know, will you marry me? And you found the perfect one and she's the best girl ever. But let's keep it a little secret just between me and you. Let's not share this with anybody else. When someone finds something good, they want to stand on top of the mountain and they want to proclaim it. Well, if we believe that what we have here is good, then sharing it becomes easier. 
In our liturgical prayers, we're reminded of this every time we have a service. What is the final thing? Okay, when we come here and we pray the liturgy together, okay, and we worship and we sing the hymns and we receive communion, okay, and then at the very, 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 very end, the last thing the priest says, what's the last thing the priest says? You know what the last thing the priest says is? The priest says to the congregation, blank in peace. Go in peace. You ever thought about what's go in peace mean? Go in peace. Does it mean like drive home safely? <laughs> Hope you make it home without getting a ticket. It's not that. That word go, like you can read commentaries that will tell you that, that word go that we say is the same go that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, his final words to his disciples after he had spent all day with them and all of his life with them, he says, go and make disciples of all nations. He says, go and preach the gospel to every, every creature on this earth. That word go is not just go and try to be safe. It's take what you got, go out those doors and receive a fire and go light the world on fire with what you've received. I read a nice commentary from a writer named Metropolitan Anthony Bloom, who's an Orthodox uh, Metropolitan. He says this about that go. And he, the, 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 he sets it up by saying, does go mean just go home and arrive safely? And he says, no, it is not that. It means this. You have been on the Mount of Transfiguration. You have seen the glory of God. You have been on the road to Damascus. You have faced the living God. You have been in the upper chamber. You have been here and there in Galilee and Judea, all the mysterious places where one meets God. Go now. And if truly you have discovered joy, how can you not give it to others? Go now. And if truly you have discovered joy, how can you not give it, give, discover joy? How can you not give joy to others? If truly you have come near to truth, how can you keep it for yourself? If truly something has been kindled in you, which is life, are you going to allow anyone not to have a spark of life? It does not mean go around and tell everyone specifically religious things or use clerical phrases, meaning don't just say Christianese. What he's saying is it means you should go into the world, which is yours with a radiance, with a joy, with an intensity that will make everyone look at you and say, he has something he hadn't before. Is it truly God has come near? He has something he had never had before, which I do not possess. Joy, life, certainty, new courage, new daring, new vision. Where can I get it? That's supposed to be us. That's supposed to be us. We're supposed to leave here. People are supposed to see us and say, hey, you don't look the same way you looked before. Like I see you on Monday morning, not the way you were on Friday. Friday, you were a miserable person. Friday, you were angry at the world. Friday, you hated everybody. Monday, you came back all love and all nice and all trust and God. Like, what? what happened over the weekend? And can I come? That's supposed to be us. People are supposed to see the light in us and say, I want what you have. <clears throat> so yes, we preach with our actions. But at a certain point in time, the action needs to translate into a word, into a spoken, into an invite. I heard it said one, one time nicely, we, the world needs today audiovisual Christians. It needs audiovisual Christians. We need to walk the walk and we need to talk the talk. We need not to do one or the other. Either one without the other doesn't work. It needs both. 